Hello Booktube, I'm Jonathan, and today I have a bit of a book haul for you, focusing on classic science fiction. A few months ago, I made a TBR video on some books that I plan to read in 2024 that focus more on authors that were new to me. Whereas today, I want to share some books from some of my favorite authors, some heavy hitters in the genre, and I'm going to dive a little bit further into their works, see if we can find some, maybe some underappreciated, underhyped books from some of these classic writers. So let's jump into it, starting with Philip K. Dick's Time Out of Joint and Martian Time Slip. So I've read six PKD novels so far, and for me, they've pretty much all been good to great. So I'm excited to keep going. PKD was a prolific writer, so I've picked up number seven and eight for me, and that is Time Out of Joint and Martian Time Slip. Now I picked up these Mariner Classics editions. I have a couple of these for PKD, and I'll be honest, I'm not in love with them. I think the cover art, I'll show you, there's Time Out of Joint and Martian Time Slip is a little bit better. I think that cover art is a little bit plain. However, I do like the spines. You can see that, that there. I, I think they look quite nice together on the shelf because they each have a different color and it kind of pops, so I don't mind that. But the books themselves, I'll give you the quick premises for each of these two. Regal Gum is an ordinary man leading an ordinary life, except he makes his living by winning a newspaper contest every day. But he begins to suspect that his life is an illusion constructed to keep him docile and happy. And if that is the case, what is his real world like? So the premise for Time Out of Joint sounds like some quintessential Philip K. Dick questioning the nature of reality. What exactly is real or not real? So it'll be interesting to see how he tackled this angle, this perspective, this style of writing early on in his career. And then I'll be able to compare that to some of his later works. And then the premise for Martian Time Slip is, on the arid colony of Mars, the only thing more precious than water may be a 10-year-old schizophrenic boy named Manfred Steiner, as some suspect that Manfred's disorder may be a window into the future. So this seems to tackle some similar elements while also introducing some things to do with mental illness, perhaps. Often a lot of PKD characters find themselves asking whether they're crazy and Sometimes maybe even us as the reader, asking ourselves if we've gone a little bit crazy while reading PKD books, hopefully in a good way. And also seems like there might be a time travel element, which I'm usually a fan of. So I'm definitely looking forward to getting into these two. I might not binge them as I don't want PKD's writing style to lose its impact, but I'm sure every couple of months I'm definitely going to be in the mood to read some more PKD. Let me know some of your favorites if you've read these two and what do you think I need to add to the list next. All right, up next we have one of my all-time favorite writers, if not my number one, and that is Kurt Vonnegut with Slapstick, Dead Eye Dick, and Hocus Pocus. Vonnegut wrote 14 novels as well as a number of short stories and essays, and of his novels I've read 11, and these are the final three left for me to read. We have Slapstick, we have Dead Eye Dick, and we have Hocus Pocus. Now I really like these Dial Press editions, I have a lot of them. I really like the colours on them, as well as the artwork done by Vonnegut himself. I couldn't find one for Hocus Pocus. Let me know, am I crazy? Let me know if it's out there, because it would be nice to kind of have a full set of all of them, but either way, I like having those as part of my collection, and Vonnegut, he's just such a special writer. He speaks to me as an author. He's so funny. I find him to be incredibly poignant, and I think he has some pretty cool sci-fi ideas as well. He's not just a sci-fi writer. Some of his books are more overtly sci-fi, some of them just a little bit sci-fi, some of them not really that sci-fi at all. But either way, I've loved all of the books that I've read from him. I did take a little bit of a break. The reason why I have three to go is twofold. The first, a little bit similar to what I was talking about with PKD, he does have a particular style, so if you do binge them, even though I was enjoying his books, a couple of them did start to blur together. They felt a little bit similar. And the second reason, I kind of just didn't want it to end. It did make me a little bit sad thinking about having no more Vonnegut books to read but it's time. I've left it too long. It is time to complete his bibliography, and I'm looking forward to these three. I'll let you know what they're briefly about now, starting with Slapstick. An apocalyptic vision, as seen through the eyes of the current King of Manhattan and last President of the United States, a wickedly irreverent farce, a final slapstick that may be the Almighty's joke on us all. I'll be honest, that's not an overly specific premise. I still don't really know what this book is going to be about, but that's okay, because Kurt Vonnegut's books are rarely about the plot so much as they are about the ideas and the themes, and this one seems rather comedic, so hopefully it lands for me. 
All right, and for our next Vonnegut book, we have Dead Eye Dick. Amid a double murder, a fatal dose of radioactivity, a decapitation, and an annihilation of a city by a neutron bomb, Rudy Waltz, aka Dead Eye Dick, takes us along a zany search for absolution and happiness. So this again, it seems quintessentially Kurt Vonnegut, as it sounds like it mixes some dark themes and some dark humor. Pretty much all of his books have a little bit of a sense of melancholy, while pairing that with some irreverent comedy. Although it seemed throughout his career, he maybe got a little bit darker at times, so we'll see for me whether he balanced those two successfully. And for our third and final Kurt Vonnegut book, we have Hocus Pocus. Here is the adventure of Eugene Debs Hartke. He's a Vietnam veteran, a jazz pianist, a college professor, and a prognosticator of the apocalypse. But that's neither here nor there, because at Tarkington College, the excrement is about to hit the air conditioning. And it's all Eugene's fault. This might be a little bit of a left field comparison, but sometimes some Kurt Vonnegut characters remind me a little bit of Larry David from Curb Your Enthusiasm in the way that often he feels like he's the only sane person in the room and everybody else around him thinks he's crazy or in the wrong. And specifically in Curb Your Enthusiasm, about half the time at least, he definitely is in the wrong, but it is kind of interesting that kind of perspective where you maybe feel like an outsider or you, or you feel like something is off and you're just looking for someone to relate to, to connect to, that's gonna understand you. And for a lot of people, Kurt Vonnegut is that person. He speaks to them through his writing. You think, yes, I've noticed something similar too. Isn't that crazy? I'm glad someone else in the world can speak to this. So we'll see if I can find a little bit of a connection like that in Hocus Pocus. I know these aren't three of the most highly rated Kurt Vonnegut books, but for me, there's no such thing as a bad Vonnegut book, so I'm pretty sure I'm gonna enjoy all of them. Let me know your thoughts if you've read any of them, what some of your favorite Vonnegut books are, and over the next couple of months, after I finally complete all of his novels, might have to put a video together, putting together my final thoughts on Kurt Vonnegut. And just quickly before we get to our next author, if you'd like to join the discussion on any of these sci-fi authors or any other, you can join our Discord server for just $49.99 a month. What's that? It's free. Oh, it's free. Uh, in that case, just click the link below and you can join the chat for free. And that takes us on to our third author for today, and that is Stanislav Lem with the Futurological Congress. I received this as a very kind gift off my Amazon wishlist. I have only read one book so far from Stanislav Lem and that is Solaris, but it became an instant favorite. A top 10 book for me, absolutely loved it, one of my favorite reads of last year, and I knew that I had to read more Lem. So I did a little bit of research. It sounds like there's some pretty good options to choose from, but I decided to add the Futurological Congress to my TBR. Here's the premise for it. Unlucky cosmonaut Ion Tihi gets sent to the 8th Futurological Congress. Caught up in local revolution, Tihi is shot and so critically wounded that he is flash frozen to await a future cure. A future whose strangeness exceeds anything the Congress conjectured. So this seems a little bit different in tone to Solaris, which was very atmospheric and philosophical. This one sounds a little bit more satirical, and I've heard, especially from Polish readers, that Stanislav Lem is a very witty writer, and maybe some of that levity or comedy might come through in this one. This was also translated by a different translator than the version of Solaris, which I read. So I'm gonna try and go into it without too many expectations based on Solaris. Just go into it pretty blind, expecting to experience something new and hopefully enjoy it just as much. All right, moving on to our fourth author, we have Frank Herbert with Dune Messiah. I think I have a relatively uninteresting opinion on Dune and that is, it's really good. As I know there is a large part of the sci-fi community that just think it's the absolute best thing since sliced bread. Sliced bread, of course, being the short story written by H.G. Wells in the 1800s. That's not true. The point is, people love Dune. Mostly. There are a few people that have the rather hot take that Dune is way overrated, way overhyped, doesn't deserve the praise. For me, I had a great time with it, and it's something that I respect and I appreciate, and I certainly understand its influence and importance to the genre. But just on a personal enjoyment level, for me, it was just that one notch below all-time favorite. But I did really enjoy Dune. I have always wanted to get back to it. I felt like the first one kind of came to a nice stopping point. I didn't feel the need to continue right away, but I think now is the time. So I finally picked up Dune Messiah. I got the Ace Edition, and I love paperbacks. I love mass market paperbacks. This is one of those tall, skinny versions, which some people hate. I happen to actually kind of like them. I don't know, maybe I'm crazy. Let me know if you guys agree or disagree, but 
it will be interesting to return to the world of June. And I think it's a good time to do it, a good year to do it, as June part two is gonna be coming out rather soon. And after watching the film, that might put me in a June kind of mood. I might wanna continue the story by reading on with June Messiah. So I think I've kind of overcommitted myself with series for this year. I don't think I'm gonna to commit to finishing all of the June books this year, but depending on how much I like it when the mood strikes, I would like to pick up another one and keep on going. And it's gonna be interesting to see my reactions to them because the first one is pretty well beloved. And then the sequels, you get an entire range of opinions on. I know you should take Goodreads ratings with a grain of salt, but just as an example, books two through six are all rated within 0.1 of each other. So I've seen people say two is their favorite, six, three, four, five, all different kinds of orders. Hopefully I'll like June Messiah and that'll encourage me to keep going. I could end up liking even more than June. Uh, let me know if that's a crazy take and let me know your June rankings in the comments. And for our final author in today's video, we have Arthur C. Clarke with The City and the Stars and The Fountains of Paradise. So I did actually pick up The City and the Stars a while ago, but I'm including it in this video on this list just as a reminder to myself that I need to read it. And I did order a copy of The Fountains of Paradise, which was supposed to have arrived by now, but my shipment got delayed. So that was a bit of a bust, but either way, I do want to read both of these books this year. And I picked up the SF Masterworks version of each. I'm gonna show you the version of The City and the Stars that I have, but it's mostly green and black, so I might just be showing you a black rectangle, which would be some pretty sweet content. So Arthur C. Clarke is one of my favorite writers. I've read three books from him so far, Childhood's End, 2001 A Space Odyssey, and Rendezvous with Rama. I really enjoyed all three of them, but Childhood's End is my favorite, and one of my all-time favorite sci-fi books. So let's start with The City and the Stars. The premise is, men had built cities before, but never such a city as Diaspar. For millennia, its protective dome shut out the creeping decay and danger of the world outside. But then, as legend has it, the invaders came, driving humanity into this last refuge. Something drawing me to this book is the time scale. I usually enjoy reading books that are set tens of years in the future, hundreds of years in the future, even thousands of years in the future. I believe this book is set millions of years in the future, and that is rather intriguing to me. I've heard some mixed reactions to this book, but I'm a fan of Clark, I'm a fan of the premise, I've gotta find out for myself. And lastly, The Fountains of Paradise. Vannemar Morgan's dream of linking Earth with the stars requires a 24,000 mile high space elevator. But first he must solve a million technical, political, and economic problems while allaying the wrath of God. I was sold at 24,000 mile high space elevator. That sounds pretty cool to me. Of the Clark books that I've read, this sounds to me the most like Rendezvous with Rama, maybe leaning a little bit more into some of the hard sci elephant, elephants? Hard sci-fi elephants, I'd read that book. Hard sci-fi elements that I think Clark writes really well, as well as tackling some of the social or economic hurdles that might arise while undertaking this insane task. So I'm looking forward to this one as well. Let me know if you've read it and how you think it compares to other Clark books. So there you go, guys. That is this week's classic sci-fi book haul. Let me know your thoughts on any of these books or if you're interested in picking any of them up. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, smash or just gently click the subscribe button. And if you really enjoyed it, consider checking out the perks of becoming a Patreon member, where you can become one of my robots, androids, or cyborgs like Nima and New Eden, Half Ogre, Zelkawe, and Colin. Just Colin. And you can find more sci-fi content over here.